Oh, it's magnet. I know. Oh, genius idea. My hands. Oh my goodness. Good morning, Bokir Tov. Bokir Tov Hag Samea. Time to get started. Should you ever think that your presence does not matter here, I want you to know it does. It makes your rabbis and Jenny so happy, not just to have a minion and not to worry if we're going to have a minion or not, but to have you all here. We have done so much for such a long time without people. It really makes a difference. And we are finishing off a weekend and starting a holiday that's all finishing a weekend that had a lot of people in the synagogue and starting a holiday that is all about gathering. And this gathering together of people is such a blessing. It really, truly is. Each one of you, your presence, your drum playing, your clapping, your singing, your lifting Torah, all of those things really, really matter. Just being here, your smiles, it really makes a difference. So thank you for being here. Good morning as we begin this festival of... Sukkot, the happiest of holidays. So find some joy. Turn to page 413. I think it's in the parentheses as we begin our festival service for this Sukkot. Into this sanctuary, we have brought the symbols of Sukkot, the lulav that re resembles the human spine. May we stand straight with courage and integrity. The myrtle, whose leaves are shaped like eyes, may we behold the beauty and grandeur of the universe. The willow, whose leaves re resemble human lips, may we offer enduring words. The etrog, shaped like the human heart, may love guide us from selfishness to service. God of Israel, let our senses be filled with love for you and your will. Let our harvest be shared with all. We continue with Ufros Alenu, page 664. We already sang Ufros Alenu. Oh, well then we'll continue <laughs> with 414. 
I thought we were gonna. I thought we were gonna do a reprise uh, uh, of that. Yeah, I just said. <laughs> you have the right book. It's in the parentheses, in the brackets. Reprise. We could go to Motown. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just follow it. Don't follow it. Just okay. We're gonna continue with words of thanks. Forget six. Forget that page. Go to 414. I'm gonna really test you. Test your. <laughs> page flipping today page 414 in the brackets for the in the brackets or you just don't need your books at all you can just listen that's fine 414 is moda moda or moda ani where we give thanks to god for all of our blessings this whole holiday is also about giving thanks and so as we look around and i hope you did get outside a little bit either last night or this morning or the night before see the beautiful moon gorgeous moon to look around and enjoy this nice weather? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> in other places, there is nice weather. How's that? How's that? Um, we always say in our family, Sukkot was not meant for Miami. <laughs> it just wasn't because sitting under the sukkah, it's been mostly buggy, a little wet, a little hot, a little sunny, pretty uncomfortable, but, but, but there's hope. Um, gorgeous, dry, gorgeous. In New Orleans, it's also beautiful, I have to say. So we're going to imagine that we're maybe somewhere else while we're in that sukkah and enjoy the gifts of God's bounty and beautiful earth. As we say together at the bottom of page 414, I offer thanks to you, ever-living sovereign, that you have restored my soul to me in mercy. How great is your trust. We continue on page 418 with Ma Tovu. Page 421, together we read in English at the top of the page, my God, I thank you for my life, body, and soul, for my name, my gender, my way of thinking and speaking. Help me realize that I am something new, someone who never existed before, someone original and unique in the world. For if there had ever been someone like me, there would have been no need for me to exist. Baruch Ata Adonai, Rufe Basar, Umafli La Asot. We continue with Elohai Neshama. Elohai, Elohai Neshama.
on page 424, Nisim Bechol for daily miracles. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher natan lesek vivina, lehavchin bein yom uvein laila. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, tokea hivri. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, atir asurim. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, zokeif yevufim. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, rokah ha'aretz al ha'mayim. Amen. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamehi matzarek aveh. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam malbi sharumi. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hanotin yaev koach. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamavir shena meinai utnu ma meafapai. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Shasani betzalem Elohim. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Shasani barchori. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Shasani Yisrael. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Ozer Yisrael bikvura. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Ozer Yisrael betipara. We continue with La Asok Bedivre, page 430. <laughs> bottom of the page. O oh, Adonai, our God, let the words of your Torah be sweet in our mouths and the mouths of your people Israel, so that we, our descendants and the descendants of all your people Israel, may know you by studying your Torah for its own sake. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to our people Israel. Baruch atah Adonai, amlamed Torah le'amo Yisrael. We continue with Baruch Amara. Page 438. <laughs> Baruch Oseh 
the bottom of the page. Sovereignty, for you are the source of life in the universe. One God, life of the universe, praised and glorious ruler, your name is eternal. Blessed are you, Adonai, sovereign, who is glorified through praise. Baruch Adonai, Melech Mechulal, Betish Vechot. We continue with Kaddish de Rabbanan, page 451. Please rise. And we're so glad you're with us online, Natalie and Nohemi. Thank you for joining us. Chatzi Kaddish, page 451. Okay. <laughs> 451, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We for from Continue with the barfu. Continue together on page 455 at the top. The world is sunlight, restoring the soul, rejoicing the heart, bringing light to the eyes, more welcome than gold. A Torah from heaven. I have no light to give the morning. My Torah, my special human gift, is words. As I bring my words forth from silence, welcome them. You who redeems the sun from darkness. Baruch atah Adonai, Yotzer HaMe'orot. Continue with the words of the Shema.
Be seated. We continue with Ve'ah Haftah together. Ve'ah Haftah et Adonai Elohecha v'chol levavcha v'chol nafshecha v'chol me'adecha v'hayu adavarim ha'ele asher anoki mitzavecha hayom malvavecha. Veshinanta levanecha, Vedibarta bam, Veshitecha bevetecha, Uvlektecha vadere, Ushokbecha ukumecha, Ukshartam leo talia decha, Veayula totafot bene necha, Uktavtam, Almezuzo betecha, Uvisha recha. Leman tis keru va si tem ekol mitzvotai vi tem kedoshim leloekem ani Adonai eloekem asher hotei tiachem meyeretz mitzrayim liot lachem leloim ani Adonai eloekem on page four sixty three. When justice burns within us like a flaming fire, when love evokes willing sacrifice from us, when to the last full measure of selfless devotion, we demonstrate our belief in the ultimate triumph of truth and righteousness, then goodness enters our lives and we can begin to change the world. We join in the words of Micha Mocha, celebrating our freedom. And in the is melody a, is, go ahead. A special tune for Sukkot that is supposed to remind us of the falling leaves, which don't really happen here unless you're killing your plants, but <laughs> the spirit is good. <laughs> maybe if we imagine it enough, maybe it'll happen. <laughs> conjure, conjure up those leaves falling. <laughs> Leslie's got it. Leslie's showing us. Leslie, show us some leaves, please, please. <laughs> show us those leaves. <laughs> Yes. 
for Livracha. Your might, O oh God, renews the earth with dewdrops of light and blessing. Let the earth be illumined and blessed. With dewdrops of joy and delight, let the earth rejoice and sing out. With dewdrops of life and well-being, let the earth be revived and improved. With dewdrops of redemption, let the earth be redeemed. song and blessing and we we usually only say it for this festival service it's so beautiful thank you jenny you are please rise if you're able for the kid page 476 
I don't know about you, and I don't know about Rabbi Fish, but I really like to listen to other rabbis' sermons that they post online from the holy days, and um, not just to compare necessarily, but to really learn, um, to learn from our colleagues what they're teaching about, what they're speaking about. And one of our colleagues and friends, Rabbi Dan Levin in Boca at Temple uh, Bethel, Boca, spoke on Yom Kippur about kindness about as a very, very simple, basic message that if we want to really change the world, it's really through the kindness that we do every day and um, doing what God does, which is seem to bringing ourselves in when we want to, when our ego gets us and when we get angry about something and when we think somebody else did something wrong or wronged us, we tend to get bigger in essence and that we maybe need to shrink back our ego a little bit and try to think about what that other person is going through, try to understand um, when somebody else, even if they've wronged you, that they may have come from a place of hurt, they may have come from a place where they had been wronged, and that sometimes, just sometimes, our ego gets the best of us and that we need to try to retract that, bring it back in and bring kindness, um, just as we ask God to do, bring more kindness into the world that we too need to try to bring more kindness and understanding into every relationship that we have. I thought it was a beautiful, very important message and that that's really who we are as Jews, or that we're taught to be kind, we're thought, taught to think of others and try to make room for other people and other opinions in our lives. Um, more diversity, more you know, diff understanding that there are different ways of doing things, even in our Torah and our Talmud. A beautiful, powerful lesson. So as we go into our prayer for peace, I encourage us all to think of bringing more kindness into this world and that that will then bring more peace into our homes, our families, our relationships, our community, and our world. Sim Shalom. Sim Shalom, Sim Shalom, Tova Uracha. Before we have a few moments for silent prayer, some words from Alden Salavi about marvelous gifts reminding us that during this festival of Sukkot, we rejoice in the marvelous gifts around us. God of old, we give thanks for moments of wonder and awe, of righteousness and charity, for the freedom to do your will. Let your mysteries unfold around us, guide us, shield us, lift us from narrow places of fear and despair into lives of service, into lives of celebration. Teach me to use my hours with care and my words as tools of praise. The world is beautiful, marvelous in opportunity, joyous in energy, pulsing with excitement, vibrant in youth, wise in years, amazing with vitality, fantastic in all life, a place of love and hope. Teach me to use my hands to build and my heart as a beacon of joy. God of all being, let me use the gift of redemption from slavery to freedom, from despair to hope, as an instrument of holiness celebrating the glory and beauty of creation, a remembrance of our exodus from Egypt. We take time for our silent prayers, remembering the marvelous gifts around us at all times.
We are about to have our Hallel service, which is a service where we just praise God over and over and again, over and over and over, more and more, more praise and more praise and more praise. It's a lot of hallelujahs and, and baruch and baruch and bless and bless and bless. And what I want you to think about is all of those blessings, all of those blessings that are in your life as if they were going to kind of be surrounding us just like we feel in the sukkah. We feel those blessings around us when we have not only the openness and being outside of the sukkah, but also, you know, whatever decorations we put on the sukkah. And this year, we got some new signs in our sukkah that are very cute that say, like, happy sukkot and um, little flags and little whatever, pictures and stickers and things like that. And it really just, you look around and go, wow, there, there really are blessings literally right around us in this sukkah. Um, but of course, it's really the, the people, the faces of the people around us that really, I think, are the, the true blessings. So we have many blessings in our community, and uh, you all are certainly many of those blessings. So we're going to continue with the Hallel Blessing on page 558. It's traditional to stand up during this part of the service. So if you're able, please rise. Page 558. <laughs> Asher kishanu b'mitzvotav V'tzivanu likro et ha'alel Page 562, sing with me, V'tzei Yisrael We continue with page 560, 565, the Hodu for Sukkot, and during this prayer, I'm going <clears> to... <throat> Shake the lulav and the etrog, and then pass it around for you to do the same. And then later we'll do that under the sukkah with the blessings. So please join us.
continue with our Torah service on page 494. I apologize if I misspoke. We're going to all have a chance to do the Lulav and Etrog after, not during the service, but afterwards. Come to join us in the sukkah, and you can do it there. Uh, for this Torah service, page 494, I'd like to invite Connor is going to lift the Torah today. I hope he's been working out a lot because it's the heavy one. You don't have to come up yet, but you're going to lift the Torah, and I'd like to invite Louise and Bruce to dress the Torah, if you wouldn't mind doing that honor. And I was going to invite for the blessing, the Aliyah. Marilyn, would you do us the honor of the blessing, please? It's so nice to have you here, and uh, we will all join together. I'll carry the Torah around to, uh, for our Hakafa as we begin. Ain't come off by no he madonai, the ain't come a serha, Malhotaha, Malhot, Koda me, O Mam Shataha, Levodor, Vador, Adonai, Mala, Adonai, Mala, Adonai, Ah, ha, ha, 
part of the Torah that I'm going to be reading. It's Leviticus 23, verses 33 to 39. Sorry about that for those online. That's Leviticus 23, verses 33 to 39. And it's a part of God speaking to Moses, telling Moses about these appointed times for festivals. So, of course, the code is one. What are the other two? Very good. Um, I knew Barbara would know, but I know most of you know. Um, so for each of these festivals, uh, it's a special time to come together. And sometimes I wonder about in our day and age if they even make sense. Because it used to be that everybody would go together. They go to the temple. They go make the sacrifice. And it was a big, giant festival and celebration where everyone was gathering for those celebrations. Today, they're usually, typically, in most reform synagogues especially, smaller celebrations. It's not usually the time that everyone gathers um, for these celebrations. However, however, one of the things that this, these festivals do, they really stop us in time and mark time in a way that Shabbat also does, that every Friday we know no matter what, it's going to happen, it's going to be Shabbat. Whatever you're doing, whether you're observing or not, is going to be Shabbat. Well, it's the same with these festivals. And they really do mark the seasons of the year. They punctuate those seasons of the year in a very particular special way. We have special melodies for these services, like that beautiful Micha Mocha that we only hear really this one time of year, this one day of the whole year. Um, we change over the seasons in our Gavuro prayer during the, one of these, the next festival service. And it really marks the seasons of the year in a very special way. And you know, what I said before is still true. Miami, I, I don't think was made for Sukkot, but, but it does remind us that even if we don't have falling leaves, which we don't, but even if we don't, it is fall, it is autumn, it is the time of year that is going to be changing. Hopefully, God willing, we'll have a little bit cooler weather, maybe it'll dry up a little bit, maybe. Um, and, and we do know that time is passing. So I think these gathering times are especially important to us for those reasons, to punctuate the year and also to acknowledge that time is passing, time is going by, and that this is part of the year's movement toward um, whatever comes next. So uh, we feel that. Those of us who do observe these holy days together as a community really feel that, those moments of passing time and marking time. So with that, I'm going to invite forward Marilyn, who's going to do the blessings and Barbara, I love when you're my Gabba. If you don't mind coming to be my Gabba, that would be great. And I'll be reading verses 20, uh, chapter 23, verses 33 to 39. May I have the yod, please? Thank you. It's not in the book, I'm sorry to say. Um, but it is right here in the Torah. If you'd like to come join me around the Torah, you can come see it in the Torah. How's that? That's good. Okay, go ahead. You should recognize that. Hasukot, Shivat Yamim, Ladonai, the Yom Harishon, Vaikra Kodesh, Kol Melacha, Voda, Lota Asu, Shivat Yamim, Tikri, Tatribu, Ilche, Ladonai, the Yom Hashmini, Mikra Kodesh, Yihie Lachem, the Hakar. Vatikra Tem Kishe Ladonai Hatsere Hu Kol Melacha Avada Lota Asu Ele Moade Adonai Asher Tikreu Otam Mikre Kodesh Le Hakriv Kishe Ladonai Ola Umincha Zebach Venisukim Diver Diver Adon Diver Yom De Yomo Milvad Shabbatot Adonai Umilvad Metono Trechem Umilvad Kol Nidrechem Umilvad kol nidvitechem asher titnu ladonai ach b'chamisha asar yom lachodesh hashvi'i. I just like to stop right there. I keep reading on. And I stopped right there. Uh, titnu ladonai. Right there. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. 
Actually, I, I'm going to ask Barbara to read that in English. Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Say to the Israelite people, On the 15th day of the seventh month, there shall be the Feast of Booths to Adonai to last seven days. The first day shall be a sacred occasion. You shall not work at your occupations. Seven days you shall bring offerings by fire to Adonai. On the eighth day, you shall observe a sacred occasion and bring an offering by fire to Adonai. It is a solemn gathering. You shall not work at your occupations. Those are the set times of Adonai that you shall celebrate as sacred occasions, bringing offerings by fire to Adonai, burnt offerings and meal offerings, sacrifices and libations. On each day, So if it weren't enough for us to gather together to mark time, also God tells us to do it many times over. So uh, we are certainly following that part of the Torah beautifully. A blessing for you, Marilyn, for you, Barbara, for Connor, who's going to lift the Torah in a little while, um, and for all of you who have come before the Torah today. May the one who blessed all of our ancestors bless each of you who has come to the Torah, come to this festival of Sukkot together with reverence for God, for reverence for the Torah, as we all say, Amen. Amen. And now, while we have the Torah out, we're going to change the order a little bit of this, because since we have the Torah out, we're going to say a Mishabarach for all those who are ill with the Torah out. You can please be seated. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, Barbara, so much. Um, as we have the Torah out in front of us, we think of all those loved ones who are ill in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for each one. We pray for their caregivers. We pray for all those who are suffering um, from whatever they are going through. And as I said before, I hope it will make us all a little bit more kind as well as we go through life understanding that so many people are struggling. And as we think of them, we say the names of those we have in mind. We pray that God will help them. We pray that we will help them. We pray that the community will really reach out to each one who is suffering. Please say the names of those you're thinking of at the same time. Hmm. She said Natalie, we're thinking of you. Ellen said, and it's true.
call for Connor to lift and uh, for Louise and Bruce to come dress the Torah. Please rise. <coughs> here on, uh, on um, Saturday for Shabbat, we talked about putting the U back into Sukkot. Talked about how Sukkot is really this individual uh, holy day, holiday, that comes right after these uh, incredible moments of, um, you don't hear me. <laughs> this is, this is, can you hear me now? That's, so it's not me. I mean, it's not you. It's me. That's good. Uh, okay. You can still hear me, Leslie? All right. <laughs> Got it. Uh, so, um, <laughs> it is. Um, so uh, we talked about this, this, these moments of our holidays that take, uh, take us out of our comfort. We fast. We rejoice, Rosh Hashanah, we deal with all of Elul, how are we going to be a better person? And then we get into this holy day, uh, really holy days of, of simcha, of, of joy, uh, of rejoicing in the comfort or not comfort of our, uh, of our own sukkah. Um, we had uh, a couple of friends over last night uh, for Sukkot, and it would pour all afternoon. And they arrive, it's still raining, and I could have sworn they were going to be like, cute sukkah, let's eat inside. <laughs> All they wanted to do was eat in the sukkah, which was the great push, because I had already convinced myself, we'll go in, we'll say, uh, we'll, we'll sit in the sukkah, we'll say a bracha, we'll come in, we'll light our candles, we'll eat our round challah, and we'll, we'll make a bracha, it'll be great. No, they wanted to sit in the sukkah, just so you get an image. There are 11 of us around an eight person table that the uh, South Miami Fire Department has declared that my circle holds 10 people. Um, and it is hot and humid and there's no space for rejoicing. But boy, did we have a great time eating in the sukkah. So let's talk about joy a little bit. Um, it's called uh, covenantal joy and um, as you know, I've been on this kick of Hadar lately. So this is a teaching that's straight from Hadar, um, which, uh, as you had, as I'd mentioned before, um, is an egalitarian, pluralistic uh, place of learning for all denominations. Um, and we're going to go ahead um, and we're going to read for you online, everyone online. I'm sorry I don't have a screen to share with you, but uh, you'll hear everything that we have. And, and so with that. We're going to learn a little bit about the joys of Sukkot, uh, and we're each going to have an opportunity to read a little bit, and we'll just pass the mic, and each one of us will have an opportunity. Yeah, go ahead. 
The Torah instantly connects the festival of Sukkot with the obligation to rejoice. And later Jewish tradition calls Sukkot Zman, Zman Simchateinu. Simchateinu, the time of our joy. Why is Sukkot of all holidays singled out as the time of happiness and delight? Understanding the joy associated with Sukkot helps us gain crucial insight into the nature and dynamics of God's covenant with the Jewish people. Okay, so I want you to turn to the person next to you. If you are online, you can go ahead and type it in the chat. Uh, I know Leslie is either in a very long drive through line or just sitting in her car, but either way, uh, if you cannot text and type and drive, don't. Um, but either way, turn to the person next to you and explain, talk, share a little bit about what is this thought? The time of joy. Why is Sukkot of all the holidays singled out as the time of happiness and delight? I give you 30 seconds, a minute, coffee talk, discuss. Do you want to have another idea? No, I like that one, because I didn't know. <laughs> All right. Um, OK, so what did we come up with? Gary in the back. Food. Food. Gary said, what do we have a reason to rejoice? Because we have sustenance for our bellies. What else? The work is done. The work? The work is done. The harvest is over. Very, very good. I wanted to add that the holiday of Thanksgiving is taken from Sukkot. It was called Tabernacles, and because the pilgrims were so thankful that they had their, their food and crops grew, and that's what was, I wanted to add that. Well, wonderful. Thank you so, so, so much, Barbara. Uh, other ideas? Leslie says there are no struggles or challenges associated with this holiday, no redemption from slavery, no triumph from war against the Assyrians, no conflicts, just pure joy. Just pure So it's not, joy. It's not the normal, they tried to kill us, let's we eat. won, <laughs> let's eat. <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right. Uh, good, yeah, Ellen, Go ahead. Zoe. Yeah, I think it's the time to be, be, to be a child, that we, we would go into the sukkah, we would have cookies, we would have cake, and it was fun. Uh, this morning on the way here, the bars went down for a train. And I just turned to her and I said, be a child. Because I was upset that we were going to be late. I said, be a child. And then the train didn't come. And the bars went right up. And she said, I disappointed her. So, uh, <laughs> so in, in true child formation, you started to cry. <laughs> I wanted the train. I, well, where's the train? Right, right. Right. I but it, it. Get, it also gets us outside a little bit. Yes. You know, because yes. we're all cooped up inside for Amen. the holidays. Amen. All right. With microphone in your hand, actually, Alan, do you want to keep reading? Second paragraph. Leviticus. Is that what we're up to? Uh, yes. Leviticus' description of Sukkot offers both an agricultural and historical explanation of the holiday. First, it speaks of agriculture. Mark on the 15th day of the seventh month when you have gathered in the f yield of your land. You shall observe the festival of the Lord to last seven days. Then a few verses later, the Torah ties the commandment to spend a week living in booths, Sukkot, to a historical experience. The Israelites are to dwell in booths in order that future generations may know that I made the Israelite people live in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. The Torah entwines agricultural blessings and God's acts in, his, in, his, in history, in his presentation of Sukkot, reminding us that God is present in both nature and history. Lest we forget that God is present in both our history and in the, in the present, in both what we've lived and in nature. Uh, when the Leviticus 23 offers the portrait of the holiday cycle, it attaches a special mandate to Sukkot. You shall rejoice 
before the Lord your God for seven days. Of all the sacred days of the year, Sukkot alone is explicitly linked to joy. Deuteronomy's description of the holidays is different in this regard. Both Sukkot and Shavuot, the fast of weeks, are connected to joy. Yet even Deuteronomy accentuates the joy of Sukkot. The call to be joyous is mentioned twice. And the presentation of the holiday ends with the vigorous charge, you shall have nothing but joy. You shall have nothing but joy. Zoe, joyfully, we read that next paragraph. Uh, so Sukkot comes to be known in Jewish liturgy in the Amidah and in Kiddush simply as the time of our joy. But what is the meaning of deep joy associated with Sukkot? Okay, next question. Thank you so much, Zoe. Uh, answer this question. What? What is the meaning of deep joy associated with Sukkot? What is the meaning of deep joy associated with Sukkot? Go back to your chavura, your chavruta, and you're going to discuss this. What is the meaning of the deep joy associated with Sukkot? Take 30 seconds. We'll discuss online. You can even unmute yourself when it's time, and you can even share with us in person. Jenny knows. Come up with friends. What do we got? What do we got? Gary in the back. The deep joy of break the fast. We have so much food. We don't need to go shopping. Um, amen. 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 Uh, Leslie, did you type something? You want to unmute? I think you can. If not, I can read it. Okay, I'll read it for you. It says, I love Sukkot. Oh, Bobby says, I love Sukkot because this is a time we can appreciate. Sukkot allows us to concentrate on appreciation, which we so often forget to do. That was Bobby. And Leslie says, we come together with family and friends and celebrate the bounty of the land and the fact that God offers us safety despite our vulnerability under the stars. Vulnerability is a big one. Thank you. Very good. What else? What else did you discuss? How is it that... Um uh, that the, this time of our joy, but what is the meaning of deep joy associated with Sukkot? Mentioned uh, Jesus and what he has given us. Thanking God for what Adonai has given us. Is that the deep joy? I, ha I have something else that yeah, I wanted yeah. to say. I mean, I also think, I really do think, because it's said in the Torah portion just right before the part I read today, which is also a part of this week's of today's Parsha, technically. Um, it also has the dates of celebration of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and all of these observances. And I think there really is no joke. We, you know, typically rabbis and um, service leaders and musicians are really grateful that the holidays are over because it's really a lot of work. But, um, but there also is a really true deep contentment that happens after the holidays, like after all of the big, the big services and the full synagogue, there's like this, this is a beautiful moment for us to be able to take time to really reflect on not only what just happened, but the real gratitude of being a part of a community and being able to make it through all of that. I mean, because it's a lot, it's a lot. And we are very grateful to Jenny, to Rabbi Fish, to all those who made all of that possible. It's nice to be able to gather and have that deeper contentment that's a little bit more um, quiet and personal. We, I mean, I asked him, and then he asked me, uh, what is our deep joy, you know? So I think that's, that's maybe what we have to also think about. Like, what, are, what aren't we doing that brings us this deep joy that now that we have this opportunity, let's do it. 
Let's do whatever that is, whatever that could be. He, he was saying something about um, performing because he likes to perform, but he hasn't done it in a long time. Just what is it in the, all of us that we haven't been doing that we, you know, we're strong, we're healthy, thank God, and we can, we can do it. Because as a wise rabbi once said, we only have 4,000 weeks hmm. in, a, in a life, in an average lifetime. Maybe the joy is that we've made it. We even just made it another week, or we've made it through the last week. In terms of the holiday's agricultural dimension, the link is obvious. During this fall festival, the harvest is being gathered and Israel is thankful for its bounty. As the Midrash notes, the contrast with Pesach, a spring festival, is striking. The expression of rejoicing occurs three times in connection with Sukkot, but no such expression occurs even once with regard to Pesach. Why? Because the fate of one's crops is still in the balance on Pesach. And one does not know whether there will be a yield or not. The experience of Sukkot must have been exhilarating. A people who had been slaves in Egypt were redeemed by their God and brought to the land that they had been promised. And now the land was bringing forth blessing and abundance. And so they rejoiced before their God in gratitude for the fullness of what they had received. Anyone say that? You did. I mean, Bruce did. Doctor, thank you. Thank you. But I was just going to say, isn't it also that going through the desert, they had everything they needed, the manna. And so here, after being in the desert, they had, they planted crops and they had, so it was a different kind of joy in the sense that it was actual food and things they enjoyed in that way. And we're going to hear more about that in just a moment. You're on the right track, absolutely. Absolutely. They've, they have survived. They've made it. Through all the hardships that they were through, they made it. So what about the historical dimension? What historical event is the source of Sukkot joy? As we've already seen, Sukkot recalls a time of intense divine human intimacy, a moment when God shielded the Israelites under God's protective presence. Kabbalistic sources offer a beautiful image of the communication between God and Israel. The minimum requirement of Jewish law is that a sukkah have two complete walls and one partial one, even as small as a hand breadth. The shape formed by these obligatory walls is like the arm, the forearm and the hand, constituting a divine embrace. In entering the sukkah, then we are held in God's arms. In a similar vein, the book of Exodus refers to Sukkot as the feast of ingathering, when you gather in the results of your work from the field. The Hasidic master Rav Yehuda Lieb, uh, author of Ger, comments that an important time to remember that we and everything we have belongs to God. God, too, gathers us in God's home, which is a sukkah. What a beautiful image to experience when we walk into a sukkah, ours or someone else's, our, our holy sanctuaries, our, 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 the synagogue sukkah, to be welcoming back in, to be re-welcomed into this covenant or this relationship. Covenant is not just about obedience. It is also about intimacy, tenderness, and love. Sukkot embodies that covenantal reality. All of this reaches its climax on Shmini Atzeret, which follows on the heels of Sukkot, on the day we put away the four species assorted with sukkah, rituals are kept to a minimum in order to remind us of what really is at stake on Sukkot, relational closeness to God. Rashi cites a midrash that evokes God's gentle affection for Israel. It is like a king or queen who invited their children to a banquet for a number of days. When they came for partying, God said, or the, the, the king or queen said, please my children, stay with me for one more day your departure is difficult for me. How many of us have said that to our own children, our own grandchildren, to our own friends? I love it when you come, I hate it when you leave. There's a joke about how long Jews take to say goodbye. They come, they stay, they say goodbye, and they leave within five or six hours of saying goodbye. It's a, it's a whole ordeal, it's a whole ordeal. Let's probe even deeper. Pesach recalls and reconnects that exodus from Egypt. Shavuot, in the rabbinic Im imagination, recalls and reenacts the revelation of Mount Sinai. Each of these two spring festivals marks one of Judaism's foundational events. 
Which orienting moments does Sukkot recall? What does Sukkot recall? Nothing. Maybe nothing, or maybe. <laughs> the permanence of forever. In the desert. Maybe our 40 year wandering is what Sukkot represents. It harkens back to no particular event at all. Instead, it recalls and reenacts the long and difficult journey through the desert in the wake of Exodus. As Rabbi Yitz Greenberg, who is just remarkable, Rabbi Yitz Greenberg, who we actually learned with a couple years ago, that was special, nicely puts it, on Passover, Jews restage the great event of liberation. Sukkot celebrates the way of liberation, the march across a barren desert to freedom and the promised land. There is something profoundly surprising here. The festivals focused on the two defining events in Jewish history and theology, Exodus and Sinai, are not the ones Judaism most powerfully connects with joy. The most joyous days of the year do not commemorate earth-shattering, world-transforming events, but rather the arduous and protracted journey from Exodus to destination. To be sure, in the biblical account, God is radically present with Israel in the desert, and memories of God's providential care lie at the heart of the holiday. And yet Judaism does not primarily connect joy to the great moments when God interrupts history and turns things upside down, but rather to something far more sober, to the attempt to live with God in the day-to-day -day march through the desert, through history and through life. Greenberg writes, it is relatively easy to rise to one peak moment of courageous commitment. It is more taxing and more heroic to wrestle with the everyday obstacles without highs or divisions. True maturity means learning to appreciate the finite rewards of every day along the way. Some traditions associate Sukkot with ecstatic joy, but at least as crucial is a calmer conventional joy, the delight of living with God, of obeying God's will, and of trying to build God's world in the midst of a stubborn, often re Recal 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 recalcitrant. recalcitrant. Everybody together? Recalcitrant reality. Yeah. This is the joy of the quotidian. Qu <laughs> can I have another reader? Quotidian. Uh -huh. I'll do it. Yep, take it Yay. away. Bye -bye. <laughs> this is the joy of the quotidian and the pedestrian, the utterly non ecstatic. It is the joy of commitment and responsibility rather than of uplift and exhilaration. Covenant is not just about intimacy. It is also, and fundamentally, about faithfulness. Note the wonderful paradox here. Sukkot is the holiday that celebrates the non-holiday, the yontif that delights in the hall, the sacred time that celebrates regular time, um, the festival that celebrates not the high points, but the morning after, and the morning after that as well. Like a good marriage, the covenant between God and Israel requires moments of excitement and jubilation, but it ultimately depends on the joy of simply waking up on a less than eventful morning and going about the business of life. Beautiful, beautiful. It's very nice. There is more. Sukkot takes place mere days after Yom Kippur, and that too, I think, adds to the intense joy of the holiday. In the course of moving through the world, we all too often fall short of both God's expectations and our own aspirations. We lose sight of God and we cause pain and disappointment to others. Imagine living in a world where forgiveness from God and from others was not available. Imagine living in a universe of one strike and you're out. Friendship would be impossible. Parent, parenting would be inconceivable. And marriage would last days at most. An enduring covenant with God would be unimaginable. Teshuvah, which is repentance, mehila, forgiveness, and kapara, atonement, are what makes life and relationships possible. This is what the Talmud means when it suggests that teshuvah was created even before the world itself. Without a human repentance and divine forgiveness, life would be a little more than a series of irredeemable broken relationships. With human repentance and divine forgiveness, the almost miraculous possibility of healing and renewal emerges. Part of what we experience on Sukkot is the joy of living in a world where forgiveness is possible. Covenant depends on and celebrates the possibility of restoring relationships. And this is where it just hits home. Extreme as it may sound on Yom Kippur, Jews enact their own death. The kittle, or white garment worn by many Jews on Yom Kippur, is an act of burial shroud. 
Fasting itself is meant to mimic death. Having just endured a dress rehearsal for death, we emerge ready to be more fully embrace life. Greenberg writes, only those who know the fragility of life can truly appreciate the full preciousness of every moment. Sukkot, Sukkot invites us to embrace the kind of joy that is deepened by a clear-eyed awareness of our own fragility and morality. The release from Yom Kippur leads to the extraordinary outburst of life that is Sukkot. Kohelet, about whom, not coincidentally, we read during Sukkot, instructs his leaders, even if a person lives many years, let him take pleasure in all of them, remembering how many the days of darkness are going to be. In other words, we will be dead for a very long time, so best to find joy now and in the time that we are allotted. Whatever it is in our power to do, he adds, do to the best of your abilities, for there is no action, no reasoning, no learning, and no wisdom in Sheol where you are going. Really, live now. The festival of Sukkot in the book of Ecclesiastes advise us, Yom Kippur has remained, reminded you that the time is limited. So now on Sukkot, live accordingly with all the joy of embracing a gift you will not possess forever. Sukkot is a time of joy. For Judaism, as we've seen, it is really the time of joy. Sukkot joy is covenantal joy. The joy of closeness with God, of faithfulness to God and Torah in the midst of the mundane, of gratitude for living in a world where forgiveness and renewal are possible, and the commitment to savoring life while we still have it. I found this to be incredibly powerful as we engage in the holy days of Sukkot. Why is it joyful according to our author in the text? Because every day, and I feel like this was a part of Rabbi Siegel's message on Yom Kippur of we have to choose life. And in choosing life, there is this moment of saying how grateful I am that I have another day. No matter of the pain and ailment I might be in or the situation I'm in or the place I'm in, maybe I don't want to be in that place. Irregardless, there's the possibility. And it's through living that possibility that we really experience the joy of life. And I think Sukkot reminds us. So. In just a few short moments, we'll have an opportunity to stand in our sukkah here at Temple of Judea, shake the lulav, smell the etrog, bring in that essence, uh, and really the joy of being together, of praying together, and of celebrating uh, Sukkot together. Please feel free to keep these with you, uh, and um, maybe pass it along to a friend to help increase their joy uh, on this holy day. And with that, we continue... Uh, as we rise for the Elenu on page 586. Elenu neshabeah la'adon hakol La'tet gerula liyotzeh breshit Shelo asanu kagoye haratzot Elo asamanu kimishmon harama Shelo Maybe they helped us at one time build our own sukkahs. Maybe they helped just encourage us to live outside a little more or to be outside of ourselves a lot more. We think of them not only on days where we're supposed to be happy, but we think of them throughout the year, bringing their souls back to life by doing mitzvot in our community for our loved ones and for our people. If you are thinking of a loved one, 
who has lived but lived no more, please say their names as my eyes meet yours. 